Hola, buenos días, no te rías. Buenas tardes, no te tardes. Bienvenidos a tu clase de español. En la clase de hoy, en Butterfly Spanish, conmigo, Ana, we're going to learn three words. Do you like that sound? That's my marker, mi marcador. Tres palabras. Allá, allá y allá. Very similar, right? They almost sound the same, especially these two. Allá, allá. Same sound, el mismo sonido. This one may be a tiny bit different. Allá. Con el acento en la última A. Allá. Chun. Allá. Allá, allá y allá. Many of you confuse these words, especially, especialmente las primeras dos, the first two. You don't know, like, which one is with Y and with double L? Hey, don't be ashamed of yourself. Because native speakers actually make gross, horrible mistakes with these words. So don't feel bad about yourself. Just think that, okay, well, you know, if a native speaker does it, then I'm allowed to do it too. But not anymore, because today you're going to learn the difference and you're going to use, you're going to learn how to use them correctly, how to write them correctly, how to teach people how to write them and tell them why. Muy bien. Allá. Allá con la Y. Con la Y. Allá. Es, belongs to the verb haber. El verbo haber. El verbo haber, it's also an auxiliary verb. That means this haber, for example, think about the, the, the verbs you use in English like uh, I have come uh, to see you and tell you. I have come. The have, you have, the have you have there, it's not to have. It's only a verb that it's auxiliating, helping the next verb. Do you know the word auxilio in Spanish? It helps. Help, auxilio, help, auxilio, right? It's like we're asking for help. So many verbs require that helper verb to convey a meaning. So it's not I have two dogs. No, it says, I have seen you, I haven't seen you. You're really using the have as a helper, as an auxiliary verb. It helps you to convey certain meaning that is not to have. Muy bien. Now, now that you have foreseen these uh, verbs in English, think about haber as that verb, as that have and has you have in English. Think of it like that, that it's a helper. So often, this verb, when it's conjugated, it's going to require certain type of verb, as it does in English. You don't say, I have went, you say, I have gone already, correct? So the same happens in Spanish. You need certain tense, certain verbs that are conjugated in a certain way to make the meaning possible. What are these verbs? Well, those are the verbs that are called participios, participios. Think about citripio. Participio is like the cousin of citripio. Participio, participle, right? And those are the verbs that end with ado and ido. The ones that end with ado is the ones that have the AR um, uh, ending. Hablar, caminar, saludar. Those are end with AR. Ido is for the verbs that end with ER and IR. Comer, beber, mm, llover, ir, vivir, sufrir to suffer, to live, vivir, cubrir, to cover. So the ones that end with ER and with IR are going to go with ido. And the ones that end with AR 
will go with ado. Now, if you want to expand your knowledge about that topic, then go to my video about participios and about citripio. Very well, but today we're just, I'm just giving you this little detail in order to know which verbs this helper, the auxiliary ones, is going to help. Which verbs? And those are the participios. So often, this verb, when it's conjugated, is going to require a participio. Participio are the ones that end with ado, ido, ado, ido, ado, ido, participio. Muy bien, now you will remember. And so, as I was saying, you need this verb, but it is very important that you remember that it requires this verb because you're using a, a mode that is called in Spanish subjunctive, subjuntivo. It's going to be used often, very often in general with that mode, subjuntivo, subjunctive. So for example, we're going to use it when you are saying, I hope, uh, I hope he comes. I hope he has arrived. Maybe he has arrived. I hope you go to the market earlier. When you are using two different people, one, the one that hopes and the one that you expect to do the action, that's a type of, of subjunctive mode because it's not happening. No está pasando. It's not a fact. No es un hecho. It's not reality uh, so far. No está en la realidad. It's only a desire, a hope, an idea that has to occur. That, 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 is, that has to occur because it hasn't occurred just yet. It's just your idea. Now, with this complicated preamble, <laughs> please don't be scared. We're going to dissect these parts in a very calm and explanatory way so you understand this, uh, this verb and these uh, words. Muy bien. Do we use it? What are the sentences that we need um, to say and use this verb? So for example, as I was saying, when you say, I hope it rained, I hope it rained, you're not in that place, you're just expressing your hope, your desire, your feeling. It would be nice if it rained, right? So I hope it rained. So in Spanish, because that's a, it's a plain time, you are speaking from the present and you expect that by the time uh, you are, wherever it's gonna rain, it had rained already. So but don't get complicated. So you say, I'm getting complicated, but it's not that complicated. You can say, espero que haya llovido. It's a hope. It's something that might have not happened. You are just expressing what you hope. It might have not happened. It might have happened. You don't know. Espero que haya llovido. I hope it rained. So really, this rain in past is the equivalent, or you need to put a subjunctive with a participle here. Haya llovido. And llovido because it's with llover, right? Llover. And haya because it's the third. It. It rained. The third person. Singular. I hope he has finished. I hope he has finished. Espero que haya terminado. Espero, yo, it's embedded here, right? But as you know, in Spanish, we tend to not use the pronoun because we are already conjugating the verb. Yo espero que él, could be ella, ella haya terminado. Maybe to finish the exam, to finish her class, his class, whatever it is. Espero que haya terminado. So you see, you're expecting something. You're giving, uh, you're telling that you hope something happened, but there are two people, two different people. The one that is saying it, yo, the verb 
in present, esperar, yo espero que él, that he, I hope that, let's say, he, espero yo que ella. So you need these two people. You cannot say, espero, uh, if I say, I hope to finish, espero terminar. But we're talking about a different type of sentence where you require an auxiliary verb. I hope he has finished. Espero que haya terminado. Two subjects, dos, dos personas, dos sujetos. We hope you have arrived safely. For example, you can say, I hope you arrived safely. You've arrived safely. Uh, we hope that you arrived safely. A very common wish. And he says, esperamos que hayas llegado bien. You. We hope that you. We hope that you. Que tú. Ok. Mm -hmm. Que tú. Muy bien. Seguimos. These are the cases in which the verb haber requires a participio, a participle in Spanish. But in English, you can have the auxiliary to have and the participle like have gone, have come, etc. And also the one that also has, of course, and have. But these examples are just to express a desire for someone else to do something or something else that had to happen. There is another use for this verb, a ver. And it is, I hope there are a lot of people. Or uh, I hope there is an answer. I hope you don't, you don't need, uh, let's say you don't need another verb, but it's more in something, uh, an action. For example, for example, I hope there are few people. Tal vez, maybe, you are going to, to get a, a coffee, but you don't have a lot of time. No tienes mucho tiempo. So you say, oh, I hope there are few people. Espero que haya poca gente. Espero que haya poca gente. So as you see, what I was trying to explain is here, you don't need a participle anymore because you're not talking about a verb. You're talking about the people, the things, the action that is going to occur or you don't want to occur. I always tell you, I hope you understood. Oh, I hope you learned. Remember, I always tell you that, siempre te digo, I hope you understood my lesson. Or I hope you whatever learned my topic. Espero que hayas entendido. So again, we are with the example of the auxiliary verb and the participle. But here, you can just say what you wish, what you hope is going to happen or it's not going to happen. You want to happen or you don't want to happen. Espero que haya mucha gente. Espero que haya poca gente. Now, a lot of Spanish speakers, and I'm not joking, some of them say aiga. Aiga. That's incorrect. That's, ve that's very incorrect. Aiga, it's incorrect. So some people might say it, but it might be rural or they understand each other like that. My mother might say it because she comes from a very small town and etc. I'm just saying it's incorrect. Now, if you want to speak like my mother or many mothers and grandmothers, then please go ahead. But I think you may want to speak with a correct uh, Spanish, right? Let's move on. Vamos a seguir. The other equivalent to this um, haya with double L instead of Y, with double L diacrítico, Y, double L, Y, it's when you say to find. Now with this one, we're going to have a similar story. To find is also the verb, it's equivalent to also the verb encontrar. So it's not only hallar, to find, it's also encontrar, hallar y encontrar. Some people use hallar, some people use encontrar. I use encontrar. And in Mexico, usar encontrar is different than usar hallar. Because hallar is for a more rural or um, uh, 
a, a more rural, uh, let's say, people, people who come from uh, little small towns, uh, like my grandmother, my mother, and some of my family. But I went to uh, high school in the city, I went to university. So this, re this verb is related to a more higher register, where, whereas in Mexico, this is related to a lower register. So you want to use a higher register, use this one. If you prefer a lower register, use the other one. Both are correct. It's just a matter of where you come from. And I don't know what happens in South America. I don't really know what happens in Spain with these verbs. Uh, because, because I haven't heard people using this one so much as this one. So let me give you some exp examples. I can find the keys. I can't find the keys. No encuentro las llaves. No encuentro las llaves. You can also say, no hallo las llaves. And it's the same and it's correct. But some people might argue, oh yes, but this is kind of like a lower register, you know, people really from a certain uh, education, they wouldn't say that. I would disagree to a certain extent because it's correct. So if you, it's just a matter of preference and maybe yes, in Mexico, more people speak, they, they say this, but not necessarily. You have to, to use the same one. No hallo las llaves o no encuentro las llaves. Use encuentro too helps you so as not to confuse it with the, confuse this word with the one with what. Bueno, entonces seguimos. Vamos a la siguiente. Uh, you always find an excuse. You always find an excuse. And here will be, will have something really funny. Because like siempre encuentras una excusa. You always find an excuse for everything. Siempre encuentras una excusa para todo. <laughs> Siempre encuentras una excusa. Siempre hayas una excusa. Ah, I made a mistake. I told you many speakers make. Hayas. No. It's to find. So it shouldn't be with a Y. With a y. It should be with a double L. Yes, but you might say, Oh, Ana. You always find an excuse to cover your mistakes up. Siempre hayas una excusa. And I'll say, yes, so what? ¿Y qué? Siempre hayas una excusa. And why is not with why? Because we are saying you always find. We're not using the helper verb, a ver, haya, 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 with the Y. No, we're saying, to find, you always find an excuse, Ana, to make your mess in the whiteboard. Muy bien. La siguiente es, I can't find myself in this country. I met some Mexicans in the States and they always say that. No me hallo en este país. Verdad de Dios que no me hallo en este país. A mí me dirán lo que sea, pero yo en este país no me hallo. No me hallo para nada. They are saying, I cannot find myself in this country. Oh, and you say, well, then go home. <laughs> no, but they are sad. They, miss my, they might miss something. So what they are using is the verb, I cannot find myself in this country. La siguiente. La siguiente palabra es allá. Allá. Over there. Allá. Allí, ahí, allá. Allí, ahí, allá. It's further, over there, but further. I have a lesson about that, so you might go, what? My, you might want to go and watch it. My muscles are a bit strange today. They are not, my English is not coming out naturally. I gotta think and say it. Anyway, over there, allá. When you say, where, uh, what's the way to get to the beach? Por allá. They say, por allá, that way, por allá. Uh, por allá. You say por, that way, that way, whatever. You say por allá. Perfecto. Also, you can say that is not like far, but not too far. You can say about a different country. Allá en Rusia, for example. 
Over there in Russia or in Russia, it snows a lot, right? You can say that. So in Spanish, you would say, allá en Rusia neva mucho, ¿verdad? When, with, the, with the question face. Allá en Rusia neva mucho, ¿verdad? Muy bien, so that's how you use allá. So, as you can see, como pueden ver, as you can see, como pueden ver, these three words might sound the same. Well, they might not. They sound the same, very similar. However, they really have a different meaning. But from now on, you will be certain when you are using each of these words because you will know if it's with a Y, if it's with a double L, or if it's without an H. And don't forget, the H doesn't have a sound in Spanish. So you're not saying haya, haya. You're saying allá because it's mute. I hope you've learned my lesson. Espero que hayas aprendido. <laughs> I hope you have learned. Espero que hayas aprendido because I'm using the auxiliary verb. El verbo auxiliar that comes, comes to help us. Like, like the, the movie, uh, whatever that movie where the birds go and save them, the hobbit. El Hobbit, el Hobbit. Muy bien. I hope you enjoyed my lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to ring the bell that is next to the subscribe button because otherwise you won't know when I publish my new videos. And if you ring the bell, then you will know. You always, you, you always, you always have to go to my website. Yes, that too. But I suggest you go to my website, butterflyspanish.com and sign up to get my newsletter. Uh, I talk about a lot of Spanish topics, a lot of uh, Spanish nuances that you may want uh, to learn or you are probably interested if you are interested in learning Spanish. So don't forget to do that. And also, uh, if you would like to donate to my channel, that would be very much appreciated. Um, I, Your donations um, make my lessons possible and I can focus more time and more effort to make more lessons about more topics. So if you can, great. And if you cannot, oh well, it doesn't matter because I am really happy to teach you Spanish and I enjoy it. Well, uh, see you in next class. Have a good night. Sleep well. Que duermas bien. Adios.